Hi, this is Mark Graben from leanblog.org, and I want to welcome you to episode 258 of Lean Blog Audio, the podcast where typically I've done audio book type readings of blog posts. This is my second experiment with trying a video because sometimes there are posts that have charts or things that just aren't going to convey uh, in a podcast. So here goes. This is a blog post from July 20th, 2018, with the headline, quote, ER wait times down, but only slightly, unquote, or ER wait times are virtually the same. So there's an article you can see pictured here from the Winnipeg Sun that was sent to me by a friend and blog reader from Winnipeg last week. You can see the the headline makes this declaration that ER wait times are down. So you might think, oh, well, good. But it says, but only slightly. So what does the only slightly mean? You know, have ER wait times gone down in a meaningful way? Um, Why, you know, they're just comparing two data points here. Is down a matter of signal or is it just noise in the system, if you will? And these are the types of questions that can be answered by the methods in my new book, Measures of Success, React Less, Lead Better, improve more. You can learn more about that book at www.measuresofsuccessbook.com. But back to the blog post, you know, in the book, I propose a handful of questions that I think should be asked about a metric. Question one, are we achieving our target or goal? Question 1A asks, are we doing so occasionally? 1B asks, are we doing so consistently? Question two, are we improving? You know, it's not enough to just ask if we're hitting a target or not. We need to know if we are getting better or can we predict future performance? Question three, how do we improve? When do we react? When do we step back and improve the system and see how will we know if we've improved? But too many organizations only ask question one. Again, are are we meeting the target? They might misunderstand a blip in the metric as improving. Back to question two. And constantly reacting to every up and down probably doesn't help answer question three, probably doesn't help us improve. So as it says in the article from Winnipeg, emergency room wait times were down slightly in Winnipeg hospitals last month compared to May. So down slightly could just mean the metric is fluctuating in the realm of noise, which is sometimes called routine variation or common cause variation being down slightly doesn't mean it's a significant difference. I'd wager that it might go back up slightly the next month. Again, from the article, but the figures released by the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority Wednesday show median wait times were largely unchanged from the same month a year ago. So it's down slightly from last month, but about the same as a year ago. That sounds like a metric that's just fluctuating around an average. I mean, a complex system tends to be a consistent system, so it will give predictable results if it's just fluctuating. But a metric is always going to have some level of variation. Again, we call this routine variation. Text descriptions of the metrics don't provide enough context to be helpful. It said in the article, the median wait time for all ERs in the city was 1.57 hours in June, down from 1.67 hours in May. Well, the number is down 0.1 hours. That's six minutes. It's down 6%. Is that a meaningful difference? We, We can't tell in isolation. If the waiting time normally fluctuated between 1.65 and 1.70 hours, then 1.57 might be a significant number worth investigating or explaining. But again, we don't know without more data. What conclusions can we draw and what decisions should we make from that data? It said in the article, the median wait time in June 2018 was virtually the same as it was in June 2017 at 1.53 hours. So, hmm, I mean, yeah, that's virtually the same, 1.57, 1.53. Within a band of routine variation where a metric tends to fluctuate, Different numbers are virtually the same. That's exactly right. It's like political polling, where you're given numbers with what they call a margin of error. Candidates polling at 52% versus 46% 
might be virtually tied if the margin of error is plus or minus 3%. You know, the results might really be 49-49. I think we need to think of our business metrics the same way. There's measurement error and other margins of error in our data. We shouldn't overreact to every up and down in the data. And there's one other important bit of context about the definition of waiting time in the article. It says, both wait times measure the length of time it takes for patients to see a doctor or nurse practitioner. The wait times do not reflect the time it takes to be treated and released from the ER. So that's not a length of stay. That's just the time from, or at least when they start measuring until you're seen by that high-level provider. I'm surprised the article doesn't discuss a goal or target. You know, organizations and news stories often obsess over this, like the four-hour wait time target in the NHS in England. I blogged about that in 2008. Three data points don't give us much of a run chart, and it's not enough to allow us to create what we would call a process behavior chart with calculated lower and upper natural process limits. We'll come back to that thought in a minute. So here's what a run chart might look like with three data points, one from June 2017, and then these two data points here even those three data points provide some context. I mean, our mind might fill in the gaps and, and see a possible reality like the chart I'm going to show next, which is something I've made up because I can't find detailed monthly historical data on the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority website, unfortunately. Does the real performance look like this? You know, again, we might see what could be described as fluctuation, noise, common cause variation, seasonality. And again, I tried finding data on the website. They display the type of comparison table that is commonly seen, but isn't very helpful. I see comparisons like this on metrics boards and organizations I visit, PowerPoint slides. We, we see something like this that shows, you know, the hospitals here again is the last month, month before, same month last year. It's showing median, it's showing 90th percentile, it's stratifying the data and breaking it down by organization. But again, all we get is that comparison. And it's just not enough, it's not enough context to separate signal from noise. So again, I'm using made up data that I used to fill in the gaps here. But how would a process behavior chart look? So if I scroll down here, this is what we call the X chart that shows the metric itself. Um, I'm leaving out um, the, the, the slight complication of what's called the MR chart that plots the moving ranges, the point-to-point -point variation. Uh, but the X chart here is the main thing to look at. What happens to this data over time? We see, well, it goes up, it goes down. I've linked to a spreadsheet in the blog post. And again, if this were real data, with that caveat, the process behavior chart here would say we have a predictable system. There are no signals that tell us anything has changed in the system. It's inevitable that some months are going to be better than others. We have our data, we have an average. These red lines represent the lower and upper natural process limits. And again, these, these are calculated limits. And in the book, I talk about um, the detail of how these are calculated. It's a simple calculation. But those limits and the fact that we don't have any data points outside those limits, again, tells us that it's just fluctuating. We don't know here if it's meeting our target or goal because we don't know what that was. And uh, we would look and say, well, it's, it doesn't look like it's improving. It's just fluctuating. So if we ask, looking here at February, why was waiting time high in February? There's probably no meaningful answer. You, you might guess flu season, which might be true. But this chart tells us that flu season is not a strong enough effect to meaningfully change the metric. It's still within the range of what could be routine fluctuation, variation, randomness. You know, if the target was 1.5 hours, this chart shows us that it's a system that clearly could not meet that goal. Being a predictable system, we can confidently predict that future waiting time medians will fall between these calculated limits of 1.5 and 1.78. Any number, any data point outside those limits would be a signal that something has changed. And again, we have three main rules that we use to look for signals, and, and this is um, explained more in the book, Measures of Success. Rule one, any data point outside the limits, we don't have that. 
Rule two, eight consecutive data points on the same side of the central line or average. We one, two, three, four, five, no, it's six, but that could be randomness. And rule three is three out of four consecutive data points that are closer to the same limit than they are to the average. Here, here's two out of four, but we, we don't trigger that rule three. So there's no signals. This is all noise. This is a predictable system. It's probably going to remain predictable unless something changes significantly. If some improvement is made, that hopefully brings that average down. So if the WRHA is working on reducing waiting times, and I bet they are, I hope they are, we can use those rules to evaluate whether or not we have real progress in the results. For example, again, if we have those eight consecutive data points below the established average in the, in the future months to come, that would be a signal that the system has changed. It might start fluctuating around a new lower average. But again, it always fluctuates. Process behavior charts are a great tool for seeing the difference between signal and noise. As I write in my book, Measures of Success, you'll waste less time reacting to every bit of noise in a metric, which will then free up the time to focus on meaningful signals, allowing you to improve more. And improvement is the real goal, not making charts. But charts can help us in those improvement efforts. And if, if my friend or I can find real data, I'll update the blog post and the chart accordingly. But I wanted to use that to illustrate, again, the key points. Don't just make comparisons between two data points. Um, plot the dots, make a chart, um, look for trends, and, and better yet, use a process behavior chart to look for meaningful signals in that data. So again, I would invite you to check out my book, Measures of Success. You can learn more at measuresofsuccessbook.com. You can pre-order the Kindle version, which is in kind of the final stages. It'll be uh, available uh, real soon, within uh, a week or two. If you want to buy the book today, you can buy it through LeanPub, a website that allowed me to sell what was called the In Progress book along the way. Maybe some of you did that. Uh, but through LeanPub, you can buy a digital ebook that includes the PDF, the Kindle Mobi uh, format, and the EPUB format that can be used in Apple iBooks and other software um, and readers. Um, so I hope you check this out. If you watch the video, hopefully you're interested in the book. Um, again, www.measuresofsuccess.com. And I hope you'll come check out the blog at www.leanblog.org. Hope to see you there sometime. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking this out.